Hello everybody and welcome back to 11th Moon. I know it's been a little bit since we've done a video, but I played a game and I really wanted to share it with you guys. So, here we are with the next 11th Moon Review. I cannot tell you how excited I was for this game. I heard about it a while ago, and I thought it would be perfect as long as they did it correctly. Unfortunately, I was thinking, you know what, they're probably going to mess up the humor, or the game its just going to suck. Superhero games are notorious for being bad, but I took a chance and I dove into the craziest superhero mind there is. Who is this man? Deadpool. There are only a few comic book characters that truly make me laugh out loud, and Deadpool stands above the rest. And when I heard he was getting his own game, I was extremely excited, but very apprehensive. Superhero games are notorious for their hit or miss, and this one I was assuming was just going to be horrible graphics, or the controls were going to be so bad that it basically made the game unplayable. See Doctor Who in the Eternity Clock. Who was that? I'm your fractured mind speaking to you. What? It's a gag from the game that we're putting into this video. Just go with it. Okay. Well, the story starts off simple enough. Deadpool's in his apartment basking in the glow- Wait. Who is Deadpool? Well, let's just ask Deadpool himself. Take it away. Deadpool, branded as both hero and villain. Deadpool was once a badass mercenary named Wade Wilson. After being recruited into the Weapon X program, Wade was subjected to experiments that gave him awesome regenerative powers and drove him batshit crazy. Today, the Merc with a Mouth travels the globe in search of fortune and chimichangas. Deadpool is in his apartment basking in the glory of talking High Noon Studios into making a game about him. They send a script over, which he immediately doesn't read, and takes a contract to kill a guy for some cash. But Mr. Sinister kills his target before Deadpool has a chance to kill him. He did have a chance. He was distracted by a bouncy house. Boing, 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 boing. Now this pisses Deadpool off, and it puts Sinister on his shit list. And that's all the motivation Deadpool needs. Yeah, like how the man went to art? Who do you think he is, the Pope? Who the hell are you? Who, me? <laughs> the other voice. <laughs> Another voice? Didn't the other guy explain this already? No, I don't... Just, just go with it. it. As you play, you are treated to a third-person view of Deadpool's world. The game is told, and I use this term very loosely when concerning Deadpool, through a logical progression. It only jumps around once, and it's purely for a gag. Not to say this game isn't told purely for a gag. Seriously guys, this, this game's hilarious. I can't stress this enough. The beautiful thing about this game is that it's told through Deadpool's eyes. So if he sees it, you see it. Whether it's there or it's not. Visually, this game probably isn't the best thing you've ever seen. Are the graphics polished? Yes. Are they rendered quite nicely? Yes. I played the game and I really didn't think anything of it. The game is exactly what I thought it was, an Xbox 360 game. It honestly never even dropped into my mind until Brian was sitting and watching and said, wow, this doesn't look very good. His problem was just that the game was so late into the 360's life, there wasn't really anything pushing the engine. And it doesn't. 
It looks like one of those tweener games between console generations that uses the new hardware, but not to its fullest capacity. And I know it doesn't, but it wasn't of any concern to me. I thought it looked great for what the game was. Then again, it may have been my lack of expectations that allowed me to just not notice. Is the game going to blow you away graphically? No, but it will never be something that kills the gaming mood. I've said this before, if I don't notice the music, that means you at least did a good job. By me not noticing, that means the music fit the mood and it didn't draw me away from the game. But that doesn't mean it was great, like other games have showed me music can be. See Skyward Swords The Sky. The music of the game is instrumentals that play in the background, and I did notice something really neat about them while playing. It would take away or add tracks depending upon what you were doing. When I was getting into battle, it would have a full track, but if I would slip away to regenerate health or got far enough away from the bad guys, it would take some tracks away. I went through and muted the dialogue and the sound effects and fought for a bit like this, and it became really apparent. I thought it was just a quieting of the music, but it turned out to be a lot more complex than that. It was so cool running back into battle and hear the drums kick in, thickening the background music and amping me up for more kills. The killing! <laughs> so at the beginning, I didn't really notice, but then once I did, I couldn't stop noticing it. It was a very well done piece of work. The game gives you a feeling of, I've done this before. But right after you say that, you think, wait, have I? Or, I don't really care because this is fun as hell. The hack and slash controls are what you've seen before. X is a light attack and Y is a heavy attack. Some of the things you aren't used to in a hack and slash game is hitting the right trigger to pull out guns, or being able to hit RB to throw out a landmine. Or a grenade. Or a bear trap. Yes, a bear trap. And bear traps were very, very useful. But more on that later. The last major game mechanic was Deadpool's teleport. It was your evade and you couldn't be hit while teleporting, but you could only teleport every once in a while unless you had the recharge ray memorized. I figured out the quickest method to teleport and avoid damage without burning the recharge ray completely down, requiring the cooldown time. And as you see, this was quite necessary at times. You only get to do that at least two more times. To level up, you earn experience points, or in this game, they're called Deadpool points, shortened to DP. <laughs> Grow up. Which is also the abbreviation for Deadpool. Ah, yeah, you, you get it. <laughs> you would earn points to then buy more weapons or apply upgrades to those weapons. You start off with your standard swords and pistols, but then for melee weapons, you can buy size and hammers. Size being the quickest, but the weakest, dealing out bleed damage over time. The swords being your standard balance between combos and power, and the hammers being slow, but powerful as hell. And each melee weapon had its own upgrades to help out its own cause. Not one weapon felt so overpowered that you'd want to use it the entire game. It was a perfect balance. And then you had the guns that you could buy. You could purchase a shotgun, a machine gun, and a plasma gun. Along with the melee weapons, the gun upgrades were specific to the gun, adding power for the shotguns, rate of fire to the machine gun, and a charge shot for the plasma gun. The guns weren't as balanced as the melee weapons, but they're still pretty balanced. Different situations called for the different guns. The guns were not balanced until you leveled them all up. Before you upgraded them, the plasma gun had a distinct advantage. It did pretty good damage, had a decent rate of fire, and it had range to it. It wasn't until you upped the damage on the shotguns and the rate of fire on the machine gun before those became effective in their own right. The last category of items you could buy were the tossable items. You had frag grenades, flashbangs, landmines, and bear traps. These were the most unbalanced part of the game. My least favorite item was the frag grenade. It did decent damage, but it was easily dodgeable by the enemies. Which they did dodge. Even on normal mode! And there was a limited range on how far you could throw them. Second most useless was the flashbang, which would only work if the enemy wasn't currently in the middle of an attack or any other special animation besides running, walking, or standing. When it hit, it was amazing, but it didn't happen all that often. The best offensive weapon, though, was the landmine. It did heavy damage and would stay active until a bad guy walked over it. A great strategy was to teleport away to evade getting hit while dropping the landmines. The bad guys would then chase you and hit them. But the single best tossable item was the bear trap. You would toss this down and people would step on it and trap themselves. 
Normal sized bad guys would be trapped forever, never attacking and slowly bleed out. Bigger bad guys would get trapped and wouldn't attack before finally getting themselves out, but giving you plenty of time to knock down their health a significant amount. It worked on bosses, big bad guys, small bad guys, everyone that didn't fly was affected by this. And it was the loveliest thing in the world. The controls of this game are extremely fluid. Seriously, they are. I was very impressed by the controls. Maybe again this goes back to my lack of faith in this game from the start, but I thought for sure this was going to be a breaking point. But it wasn't. The attacks blended well, the teleport worked very well, and everything was extremely responsive. If you hit the attack button three times, no matter how fast, it would remember and you would attack three times. I noticed I messed myself a couple times this way. I would teleport myself out of trouble, but I'd accidentally hit it twice and I'd end up teleporting right back into the enemy attack. But it always felt like it was my fault when something bad happened. One of the things that always finds me are the glitches, which they didn't find me. I, I really, I couldn't find any of them. I wasn't searching, but I, I didn't get hit by any of them. There was one annoying thing, but it wasn't really a glitch. I would knock a guy into some different elevation and then he could hit me, but I couldn't hit him. That was about it. Now the AI on the other hand, they were annoying at times. It would be a one-on-one -on -one setting, and I'd be trying to run around a pole to get the guy on the other side, but then he would move in the opposite direction to avoid me. And then I'd reverse my direction to get him on the other side, and then he would reverse, and then I'd reverse, and I'd honestly go through for a long time and I wouldn't even see him. I would try and find them behind the pole, and I couldn't. They would move in the exact opposite direction at all times, to where I would not be able to see them, even with my omnipresent third-person camera. It was frustrating because I thought the guy died from bleed damage, and so I'd start walking off, and i get shot in the back. Like a life or death ring around the rosy. You know that song's about the plague, right? Anyway, it, it didn't happen all that often, but it was enough to know it was a program technique on the AI's part. Overall, this game was great. The storyline was insane, but fun and hilarious. The gameplay was solid, but sometimes frustrating, but hilarious. This game was golden. Now, I didn't want to say this before, but it reminded me a lot of Lollipop Chainsaw. But so much better. So much better. I didn't ever want to put this game down, whether it be for getting hygiene or food or baseball or weddings. I didn't want to stop. I just wanted to keep playing. And I know you would too. I know you would love it. Me? No, not you. Who's he talking to? The viewer. The who? Just go with it. That's why I would give this a five out of five. Stop. What are you doing? Eating a sandwich. How's it going on over here? Recording our review? For, for what? Deadpool? I just did a whole review. Serious? Yeah, for 11th Moon on our main channel. That dude's still around? Holy shit! Really? Yeah. Wow. Was it good? I liked it. Well, the game was great. The review was pretty good, too. How? Did I do good? You did great, man. Nailed it. Alright, see you later.